70 percent uh for coverage usually in my mind or in my market means uh there's potential for a podium uh and building and then building some top and then the podium is great because you can have a separation between the public outdoors and the private outdoors and you can do um stuff like parking um above ground parking you know so you don't have to do expensive digging and so on. what i'm doing here is i'm defining this volume as a parking volume and that automatically generates part a parking system uh, that you can customize any way you would like to understand sort of the, the parking potential of your site which um depending on which market you're in is more or less important um in norway parking is kind of on the decline in urban areas uh but still people need to put their cars somewhere right so what i am next up doing so i'm adding uh these are line buildings parametric line buildings and i can snap them to the top of uh, my parking area and start playing around with volume heights these are uh, 12 meter deep buildings in i think i'm defining them as 20 22 meter sections so this is a what I would call a realistic building uh, depth and width in our market. Now I know that if you are doing a a, a double core central corridor kind of thing, you are looking for thicker buildings. But in in Norway, uh, a, a single egress design with uh, the secondary escape is, uh, through uh, facades is, is is very common. So that's kind of that's what's local to this market, right? And again, using these constraints, I'm looking at, okay, so what happens What happens in north where we can go tall versus in south where we can't? And we're kind of now starting to, um, to look into what the actual potential. We're getting somewhere with, with this uh, kind of design. Still very early days, right? So... Looking at these initial qualities, you order just as you go, you just keep ordering is maybe the wrong word. You keep running analysis, keep exploring uh, options. And since these things happen in the cloud, you kind of just uh, initiate them and then you keep keep on designing. And then each of these snapshots will be recallable. So looking here, we're looking at a rapid noise analysis. And I am learning that... Um, obviously, this building blocks road noise perfectly. I'm also seeing that this larger courtyard has potential for good uh, sun conditions. And looking here on the uh, right-hand side, I am keeping an eye on my floor areas. I'm keeping an eye on my parking. I'm keeping an eye on my um, my footprint, which, again, 70% is my number. And, and I hope you going. You're getting there? Go ahead. Are you getting there with the 70%? I'm at 76 right now, right? So there's some some uh split thing needing to be done. And obviously this is not, you know, this is a wall. This is a fortress. So it needs we need to start looking for the the good openings for the good the good volumes. So I'm just gonna uh, like jump into uh yet another alternative. And at this point, I'm starting to think about my clients, right? So we have this separation happening and i know that it's going to be comfortable for my three clients to sort of have a uh option to do this in in steps right in 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 uh, so you do a building at the time so there's not a huge development happen at the same time so what i'm doing right now is i'm recreating this podium but i'm putting in this avenue in the middle and that's going to help me connect better to the ground, to connect better to uh, the city itself. And I'm, you know, turning off the terrain to just easier design. Then I'm going to start populating again with line buildings. Now in this uh, proposal, I'm trying to sort of give each three of these um, landowners sort of their building, uh, even though they have to have a unified design for the site in order for it to go through zoning, having sort of their building each uh, makes the sort of like, while well, you, the, the transactional needs between these parties to be reduced. Obviously, like two of these landowners could just sell to the third one or there could be a fourth party coming in buying it. 
But these kind of things is risk reducing when you're exploring a site very long, early on. And that is kind of the name of the game, right? It's maximize potential and reduce risk, at least in order to land the deals uh, at this point. And so I guess also, yes, but I think looking at this, like it's really easy to see that this is a good tool for communication, right? The different, the three different parts, they can see exactly what they get at the moment, although it's very early in the process. Very early, but already now you can start, start to point out uh, the, the different kinds of area metrics each of these parties get and how we're dealing with the zoning, how we're dealing with the, the context around. Uh, so it's as a communication tool or as a negotiation tool, it's, it's, it's you know, it's gold. Great. Uh, and, and I really like to, that you can see that parking lot underneath the parking space because it also points back to the open API and how we've invited in TestFit uh, to, to design uh, our parking tool, right? Absolutely. So the parking tool we're looking at here is the built-in one, but there's a there's a test fit extension. So if you're more a a, a parking on ground kind of guy, then you should definitely check that out afterwards. It's really cool. Great. I will. Thanks. And this 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 ecosystem that invites people to be a part of the of Forma. That's to me uh, a fantastic situation. So right now, circling back to the proposal we have. I have realistic, given the market um, uh, um, building volumes, I have a parking number. I have, I'm, I'm at 64% of the, the, the footprint, so I'm well below. Uh, I've got some, some leeway to play here. Um, so this is kind of the, this is the, the opening of the business case, right? Does this make sense for my clients? Um, would they would they would they like to proceed with this? Should we start looking at uh, securing good architectural quality so that once we later on communicate with municipalities or with other stakeholders, um, there's alignment on 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 the process, right? Great. There was one uh, one question in the chat earlier that I I think maybe we can address quickly. Um, so. We have Tyler asking, what's the level of accuracy for model placement on site? Can it be directly referenced to parcel data? And you addressed that earlier, I think, when importing the data from, from the different data sources, the That's parcels correct. popping in there, right? That's correct. So if you do have, um, if your local market have a database of parcels that's connected to format, then you can order it directly into Forma. So for, for Norway, obviously, uh, as you saw, um, there's that database exists. Um, and if there's countries that do not have that data, that's, that's, that's feedback that the product teams want so they can start implementing new databases. So there's a, there's a hotline for, for suggesting new databases as well. That's great. Yeah. So it's geo referenced from right. the beginning. And that's important. Like georeferencing is important for when you're looking at qualities, which is what we're going to be doing now. So I'm uh, going to dive into different kinds of uh, qualities, starting um, with the the noise, the rapid noise. So given the traffic number of this road, I get a noise map on ground that tells me something about um, how these kind of data happen. And as I update the building, as you can see. Uh, the noise map re-updates. So this is a, a, a machine learning model based on road simulations. So what I'm seeing here is that um, this kind of opening does not uh, ruin my, my potential. And I can start populating the area metrics by giving functions to buildings. So I'm telling the, the, the software that these will be residential. And that lets me filter and sort my area metrics down into you know this and this much residential, this and this much of whatever other function. I can then start looking at uh, the environmental qualities. We're looking here at sun hours on facade and ground. And based on that, I can see that I am creating a, a, a good sort of interior, large interior courtyard where you can create public spaces or semi-public or private spaces. And you got this avenue cutting through and the public space on the east there. So that's that's promising for future design. 
let's look at uh, what happens next. Uh, let's look at what happens once I'm kind of satisfied with the, the, the massings on my site. And just an example, obviously, I would do you know five or 15 of these different kinds of proposals to explore. But assume we're a little bit downstream. Uh, I'm feeling confident about the, the proposal I have. What I'm doing right here is opening up uh, the, the floor plan sketcher mode. So that's a mode which allows me to just quickly define different floor plans directly in the product. And we're talking like simple, you know, one to 500, one to thousand level of detail here. Um, so it's it's lines, it's uh, it's functions, it's corridors and cores, it's, you know, area size and numbers, which will help me to sort of understand uh, maybe what kind of what what kind of program would I like within this proposal? So I'm just looking at this as one uh, version, and I'm um, you know you can edit multiple. You can have different points, uh, and you can add the one you designed from uh, one building to the next. You're kind of reusing the design. So here I'm looking at this 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 uh, twelve by twenty two uh, module with a single um, with a single core, which is common, but obviously at 13 floors, I believe I would need a dual core. But we're still naively, quickly sketching up, trying to understand our uh, project and, and program. And maybe we'll be uh, you know, flipping some of these buildings to have the core in the north end so we don't waste the uh, valuable southern facade on elevators. Um, and then, um we can go from there and 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 uh start to really like explore something that's in at least in my market extremely important and that is uh balconies which is a definitely a must have so you know as uh, both the me as an architect but also developer would like as large as possible balconies um people like large balconies in, the, in this market so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to sketch up some basic uh, balconies with a you know with the built-in 3D sketch tools, which those of you using uh, Formit will find very familiar. It's built on the same uh, same engine, and it, you know it's it's uh, it, it's sketching, it's pushing, it's pulling, it's defining sizes. So what I'm um, doing here is I'm just going to mock up some basic balconies with some um, columns. Um, as some different designs. What this is going to do is going to help me look at what kind of qualities am I creating with my architecture. So very sort of, you know, as with any other 3D design tool, you are just, you know, pushing, pulling, designing, doing whatever. I'm breaking uh, one of the rules here by having a single manifold edge. Um, as an architect, I would do this all the time, but the 3D designers would uh, absolutely hate me for doing it. But we're talking quick and dirty right now, aren't we? So having designed one balcony, obviously I just group it and then I array it out so, so that I, I, I get a some sort of facade. And again, you know, it's I'm at this point not thinking about the architecture. I'm just thinking about understanding the impact of deep balconies on my project. Like what kind of uh what kind of spaces am i making am i creating a problem or am i solving something and you can do you know you can do uh, aesthetic changes as well you can you know push pull a corner and get some sort of faceted edges um edit one and you edit all because they're they're a group you know this is stuff we all uh love and expect from our 3d tools right finally directly available in all this corner.